these different dance clubs that were old time dancers, they would come to this public dance, they would sit together, and that was absolutely fine, so you know which areas and which clubs were sitting where, but then individuals from each one, maybe the teacher or someone prominent, would actually before the dance approach the band and talk to them. And then a program would then later emerge during the evening. But what was interesting was that they would announce a dance, and sometimes only the people from one club would go up onto the floor and kind of do their dance and everybody else is sitting and watching. So it's rather than having everybody get up, this became almost like an unsaid or silent competition. They were going up and saying, we just learned this one, we want to dance this one. So rather than having a full floor, you had select groups from different parts going up. Over time, of course, when one dance has been done at one dance, the others run away back home to the clubs and say, we need to learn this one. So at the next one, everybody can get up. And, and it mushrooms from there. But I think what struck me was the speed at which this acceleration took, uh, took place. And if you suggested, I asked um, the band leaders and some of the dancers, you know, if they announced something like the Bruins Reel or a simple Gay Gordons or a, a St. Bernard's Waltz, which are fairly straightforward uh, common dances on the repertoire right across Scotland, um, they would say nobody would either get up to dance it in this particular crowd, or the dance system said, that's old hat, we don't do that anymore, you know, we just want these new ones. So they were going to a public, to a public space and demanding that their dances to be done, rather than just joining in and taking whatever the band was uh, offering music-wise. Uh, interestingly as well, uh, some of the crowd would, if the band played a tune they didn't like, I've seen a whole dance floor stop. You know, there's two bars in and they all go like this, and someone will just go over and say, you know, play hey, this one, this is what we want to dance to. And the musician go, mm -hmm. and then carry on. Quite extraordinary. But anyway, that was going on. If you, as a tourist, turned up to one of these public dances and paid your five pounds as it was at the door, and expecting to do something that everybody could join in, maybe have a caller that Dave is going to talk about his role in Scottish uh, dance and music. That didn't exist. You became excluded. Or if you came as some an occasional dancer, you couldn't get a foot in. This became a domain by these groups doing uh, their thing. So the negative side of it was that it became a competition trying to better each other in a way, but nobody spoke publicly about it, but you always heard that, oh, they did such and such at this dance, so we need to go away and practice. So it was very much in the consciousness. And to me, it excluded people who just wanted to come and join in. And as the organizer for a number of these dances, what I had to do eventually was to, before we started, I went round to each table and said, give me your three favorites, made a list and then went up to the band and said, so I became the, the buffer in between the band and the dancers <laughs> and said, play all of these in whatever order and put some normal ones in between and everybody will be happy and that kind of worked. But I thought, hmm, this is an interesting thing going on here. On a positive side, it encouraged this particular group of people to really work on their dancing and really find a flow and, and learn these dances and what have you and really try and execute them in, in, a, in a nice way. They were always smiling and they were always quite happy. Um, same with a couple dances, they really worked on the footwork and trying to get all the intricate turns in the various uh, new dances like new Killarney walls and what have you, they all came on the, on the scene at the time. But it still uh, niggled in my mind that I'm putting on a public dance, or someone is putting on a public dance, and not everybody can actually join in. So if you think of Victor Turner's notion of a communitas, where everybody should be able to go into a safe environment and just take part, maybe it was a minor communitas for these people, but certainly it wasn't for everybody. It was a little bit exclusive. At the same time, I could go just a couple of miles down the road from one of these dances to a little uh, village called the Murrows, just north of Dundee, where people from three villages would come in and it was open to the public. Um, anyone could join in. They did more of the old-fashioned dances, they welcomed beginners, they welcomed children, they did the opposite to these other dances. And you were included. 